We're living for the moment now at one with the world. I can't lose this, this feeling I get. My heart's in the right place, and so is my soul, yeah. I won't take no, take no excuses for it. I love any day living. I feel like something's missing when I do not have it. I feel it in my bones, gotta find my space. These emotions on my face. Taking a toll, I gotta pay it forward. I'll give it all that I can. No matter what, I won't let up. It's in my soul, it's in my blood. And I won't take no for an answer. If it don't hurt me, it makes me stronger. No matter what, I won't let up. It's in my soul, it's in my blood. Chasing love in an empty bar Pour a drink till I make it past The midnight hour seems to come and go But I know Walk on up with a drink in hand Sipping mixes cause you can And all the lights begin to switch on Chasing the night 
Chasing the night Hotel rooms and city squares Champagne bottles, drum and snare The sights and cities seem to fall away When you stay Locked in love for a night or two Losing sleep just to get a few Day to day you wanna stay out the chase
Chasing love in an empty bar Pour a drink till I make it past The midnight hour seems to come and go But I know Walk on up with a drink in hand Sipping mixes cause you can And all the lights begin to switch on and welcome to a very exciting race with some very exciting cars on a very exciting track. Today, Racing Club International brings you our first round of the GT4 racing. Of course, GT4 went live this past Wednesday here at the Center Course of Competizione, and this will be our first venture into it. And where better to put the GT4 for the first time than at Mount Panorama, also known as Bathurst. Currently watching Harry Conway coming down the straight into the chase in his Mercedes in third position. Killian Ryan Aminen and Fernandez, of course, finishing out the top one, two, three here in the practice session. We'll be moving over to qualifying here shortly. Today's pictures will be brought to you by Mr. Jake Boswell doing the streaming for us today. And of course, my name is Mike Jones here with RCI and in the box with me for commentary, Nick Sitnik. Hey everyone, how are you doing? How are we doing? We are doing great. I'm super excited to uh, see this uh, race unfold as we see Billy Eckstein go sideways uh, coming down the hill there. Uh, I think that is something that we're going to see qu ooh, uh, quite a, a bit of um, as these drivers are getting still used to the GT4 class. Uh, as was mentioned, it was only re uh, released this week, um, so they're still kind of getting used to these cars, but it's so cool to see uh, new vehicles out on the track uh, in ACC, and we get to commentate them at a very fun and exciting track as well, uh, down in Bathurst, uh, which is a track that I love to watch. I think it makes for very exciting racing. It's a, it's a very tight track, uh, and the cars get nice and spread out because of, of the, the length of the mountain. And down the mountain, and uh, I think we're going to see uh, the extent of what the GT4 class can uh, really offer us. Yeah, I totally agree there, Nick. And you know, this is something that, that, like you said, Bathurst always a great race. You know, when I was, I, I was sitting here thinking, man, what, what do I want to do for the first race here, right? Because uh, when I was setting this one up, and I just, oh wait, duh, we're racing Bathurst. Uh, you know, we we ran a GT3 race here at the 9L slot uh, a couple weeks ago, um, as we're now forwarding I mean, I, the uh, Night Owl race a couple weeks ago here at Bathurst, and of course we had one of our pre-qualifying races for the six hours of Barcelona this afternoon, or, or well, sorry, this morning for us, me and Nick here in the U.S., but uh, that, you know, kind of mid-afternoon evening for, for the Europe guys. Um, uh, 
so we figured, you know, hey, let's do that, and then right after that, we'll we'll do a bathroom race. So a little late here. You'll notice across the timing board there on the left that you have two different colors across the board there, white and red. That means today will be a multi-class race. Uh, still all GT4, but multi-class. We will have pro and am drivers. Total of 37 drivers on the grid as we start qualifying here. About uh, just under half the grid is pro, uh, and just over half the grid is am. And as we saw through the practice, a lot of the pro drivers definitely, definitely towards the top of the meters. So you know, I think they have reasonably sorted themselves out. As we're currently watching, uh, I I'm gonna try this for a second here, Nick. Uh, Bash Sh Sh Shilstra. I'm gonna say Shilstra. Uh, that's what we're gonna go with. <laughs> That's, Shilstra sounds good to me. I actually wanted to note, uh, while I was looking down, uh, oh gosh, I lost the name now. Uh, obviously, we have our uh, one of our local favorites, Billy Oxtain, out on the grid, uh, a excellent racer, uh, and uh, as has been commentated, has one of the coolest names in racing. Uh, you couldn't ask for a, a better surname than Octane uh, and be a uh, sim racer, uh, but he has a little bit of competition, I believe, because there is a another driver out on the grid currently with the surname McDude, and I think uh, that might be in some uh, competition with Octane for uh, coolest name on the grid. McDude, I haven't seen that one yet. We'll have to keep an eye on him. Of course, as Jake Boswell switches over to watch Billy Octane in the V8 Power Baby Chevrolet Camaro, and of course in his traditional blue, pink, and black livery, as we find Brock McDude for the. Uh, that the Ranny Racing Racing, I think is what that says. Sorry, our Discord stream is just a just a touch less quality than you guys are probably seeing on YouTube, so a little hard to read the text at times, but that is a interesting name, and he is, of course, in the pro split as well, as he has a white name tag, so he'll be up there competing with Mr. Octane here in a bit, and I noticed we had... Jake kind of flipped over to somebody there for a moment uh, named Ted Edwards. That is one of our staff members. He is one of our community moderators here. So we have a couple staff racing in a race tonight. Ted Edwards here in his Audi, one of the couple Audis, or if, if not the only Audi on the grid, I believe, in fact, at the moment. And, of course, down near the current bottom of the grid, as he just recently joined the server, another one of our staff members, broadcasters, and administrators, Mr. Ryan Gill for the Combox Racing Team, as he's getting out of the way here, also in that Camaro. Very similar livery here to Octane, actually, Nick. He's got it kind of the same colors, so wondering if him, him and a Billy have teamed up on that one. Uh, yeah, a little bit. I think that's a uh, pretty bold choice. Uh, I think the Camaro actually has some really awesome uh, livery pattern options uh, as uh, we oh, were doing earlier exploring. As, as he, was, he was spinning right out of the quest, right out of the pits. Uh, that's that's always rough to see. Uh, but yeah, I mean, I, 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 am, I am excited to see what people come up with with liveries. I mean, we're dealing with a, uh, a, a bunch of new canvases, uh, if you will. Uh, so we'll see what they are coming up with. Uh, Ryan Gill currently rocking the uh, like medium blue in the front with the black back with the uh, lightly purple stripe in the middle. Uh, yeah, so I mean, uh, we'll be seeing plenty of that as they are coming around here. Actually, um, I don't believe any times have been set yet uh, we're just getting out to the outlap uh, 50 minutes at Bathurst uh, quite honestly is not a whole lot I mean we're gonna see maybe a couple laps set for everybody but uh, with uh, Bathurst being a little bit of one of the longer tracks in ACC uh, we'll see what kind of laps they can set down when they only got uh, possibly two solid options to see what they uh, how they stack up and of course we are seeing a Mercedes here of uh, Harry Conway kind of tapped the wall a little bit there and you know these guys are obviously pushing as you said earlier you know we haven't had a whole lot of time getting used to these GT4 cars yet but you know it's only been out for a few days and uh, these cars are definitely uh, let's call them slippery <laughs> I, I ran a few test laps this week haven't had a whole lot of time this week but I, I, I ran out and ran a, a couple laps on Wednesday just with each of the cars around Suzuka just to kind of get a feel for him a little bit, uh, and then yesterday ran a few laps at Bathurst just to kind of get used to the conditions a bit here that these guys are going to be racing in, and yeah, it is, they are slippery, man, um, they just, you know, they don't have as much downforce as GT3 cars, you definitely have to let off the throttle in a couple more places that you don't in those GT3s, 
and it's really kind of shows that as you as you see these guys come across and i think that that's what's going to make this race of bathroom so interesting is that you know it's such a tight track you cannot screw up you screw up you're smashing something whether it's the wall or another car is yet to be find out but you know when the, when the track's only about a car length or a car width and a half wide each time you make even just the slightest mistake you touch a barrier you don't let off the throttle enough you're thrown into the wall we are of course seeing people's first laps be put down here currently watching killian ryan meenan in the alpine which has been a favorite uh, from a few things that i've seen currently sliding past the car he is seven tenths up on his time now six tenths up so he's kind of floating around that mark going to be coming down onto the straight here shortly uh we just had a blazing Amazing lap put down by McGulley there in the Mercedes at 212.5. Killian was about six tenths off the lead, give or take. He is now 1.3 seconds just about. Trying to flash the lights, make sure these cars in front of him know he's coming because he is trucking down here. Eight tenths up on Meenan's time here. We're going to see if he's able to hold the rest of that as he slides around the chase there back into the final corner he's going to come into that final corner lost a couple tenths there from that slide so six tenths maybe might make it up to fifth place but i think he has lost enough time to potentially stick where he's at picks up the seven tenths and there it is just sliding into the fifth place and he's going to pull over get some fuel probably come on back out on the track eight minutes remaining here in qualifying for these guys to throw down some times and one blazing time put down the rest of the top five there or the rest of the top six rather are pretty like far ahead of seventh place which is honestly not what we usually see Nick we usually see what maybe down to about p20 or so is usually pretty close and these guys uh seems like there's just six real quick drivers today yeah absolutely I mean uh with uh the new GT4 class coming out I mean I'm expecting this a little bit uh, I think the consistency might not quite be there uh, also the Bathurst is uh, I feel like it's gonna be punishing for the GT4 class uh, especially with the experience levels that we have I mean these are highly skilled drivers we've seen them uh, race around uh, for our uh, previous RCI events and they can set very consistent times and even with uh, uh, versus each other I mean being within a second uh, as you said, down to, you know, uh, 12, 15, 3, even the top 20 could be within a second or two. And that is standard because just that's how that's just how consistent they can be uh, with themselves and with each other. Uh, but I mean, I think this is going to shake out. I mean, we uh, we're going to see at least another solid run of laps. Um, I mean, we were watching uh, Harry Conway for a minute. Uh, he was uh, pretty dominating in practice. Uh, he was up uh, at least a few tenths over everybody. Uh, as he was setting uh, quite a few laps, but I mean, they were they, they were solid laps uh, in in range of the 212.5 that we're seeing in pole position. I did want to point out that uh, it looks like Mercedes is currently dominating the top four spots, uh, followed by a few BMWs. Uh, so, you've driven the cars around a little bit, Mike. Uh, how do you feel ab uh, about that that, sh that that shakeout? Do you think the Mercedes deserves to be dominating this uh, class right now? You know, I'm not too surprised on it, to say the least, as we watch Gil come across the line, pick up a few tenths up into 11th, and uh, Boswell now switching over to, uh, I'm, gonna be, I'm not even going to try with this one, R Romanic, Rom Romanco, uh, <laughs> here in P2. Uh, sorry, I'm very American, I have a hard time pronouncing names, I'll give it my best, boys. Uh, currently five tenths down, give or take, on the leaders as, as Quigley uh, puts down an even faster than McGooley does. So now we have the BMW in first place. That is two people that are in that uh, below 212.5 range, give or take. So a lot of time to make up, of course. This general watch here, the number 48 Mercedes, has been floating around a tenth, two tenths up. But I don't think he's going to make it yet. Uh, he just lost another couple tenths there, so I think he's going to lose some time coming out of the Conrad straight, and he's going to give him one more lap. Got about five minutes to go. But yeah, Nick, to get back to your question, uh, it doesn't surprise me so much, right? Bathurst, very fast track. Uh, it, it's something that, you know, you you definitely have that, um, that interesting balance of you've got two long straights, right? you got the Mountain Straight, you got the Conrad Straight, but the top of the mountain is very fast still. Even though it is twisty, curvy, uh, you've got to go through through skyline, you got to go through through the forest elbow and everything like that. 
it's still a lot of you need that torque uh, that that to really get you get you going down the straight. And from what I've understood so far, the Mercedes and the, and the BMW are both very good at that. Um, you know, they're they're the Mercedes in comparison to the GT3 Mercedes isn't quite as understeery. Uh, when the the GT3 Mercedes is known to just have that understeer in it, that's kind of a bit of a problem. And uh, as Fabian uh, is saying in the chat right now, you know, he says just fairly easy around Bathurst. You know, so it's it's something that you can just kind of dance around. Um, it, it gets rid of some of that that understeer that the GT3 model has. Not that the GT3 model isn't quick, but you know, I'm not surprised to see it quick. I'm just curious how it's going to hold up in race pace, of course, because being quick isn't everything. Anybody can go down and throw down a couple quick laps, but how will you end up in the race? That's the real question, because that's going to happen here in, oh, about 12 minutes or so, if I had to guess, until the green flag will drop, and then it's really going to be the test, because top eight right now, Mercedes and BMW, four for four, or four and four, rather, of each, as we're back, still watching Joe McCooley here, he is trying to push up, get that P1 back, so far is currently even on his time. He was a tenth down, has picked up just a little bit. And in fact, uh, in third place there, the gentleman we were watching earlier in the 48 Mercedes, three tenths up even. He is directly behind McGooley here. I'm just going to butcher your name today, Joe. I apologize. Um, so he might actually pick up that time that he was missing last lap. And of course, Killian Ryan Meenan just popped off a lap as well, now up into third with a 212.5. That puts him just about a tenth off the leader. So again, another BMW that is now, you know, just kind of slid his way in. Oh, oh sorry, Killian Ryan Meenan now in fourth position because Conway pops off a 212.3 for the first position. He is now four thousandths, or sorry, four hundredths, or almost five hundredths above uh, Guiglia there and this is going to be a scrap for the next two and a half minutes I'm sure this is going to keep happening because Conway's up on his time Fernandez is up on his time Woost here that we're watching uh, four tenths up on his time we have Brock McDude back at 13th place four tenths up on his time these guys are not giving up this is Woost going to be coming across the line five tenths up on my screen and there he is up in the fifth position and now we're seeing those gaps start to close down a little bit Though, as you said, Mercedes and BMW dominated the qualifying here, kind of no matter what, a half a tenth uh, above the nearest car, which is the Camaro, back in ninth position there. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, we actually see the uh, uh, our, our own Ryan Gill actually in the Chevy is going to push up into tenth position, trying to grab that uh, in the top ten spot, and he's uh, about... Uh, just a little over a second off of what Harry Conway just set that really awesome lap. Uh, he was actually up about eight tenths up from his previous lap, so that was really him pushing. Uh, so I, if I were to guess, I believe that's about where he's going to sit, unless he can find a little bit more time. Uh, actually, he's already returned to the pit, so never mind. Uh, he's going to hope that that can hold on, but I mean, we're talking hundreds of a second here. Uh, as we're uh, currently watching Fernandez try to grab a little bit of time. Uh, he's up uh, three tenths currently. Uh, the only other person who's also up is uh, the number one, uh, Miguli, is up uh, five tenths, uh, which would be plenty to put him uh, into pole position right now. So we will see how that shakes out when that lap is finished. Uh, but yeah, uh, I, I mean, it, it is interesting to see that the Mercedes and the BMW are shaken out to be uh, pretty much dominating this grid currently. I mean, we see a couple uh, other makes uh, here and there um, past the top 10, but I mean, it's pretty cut and dry that it is dominated by Mercedes and BMW currently. Uh, and as was mentioned, uh, that's, that could just be them shaking out to Bathurst. I mean, it's just an excellent track for them. Uh, but as far as the race goes, I mean, it's always gonna be a fun race around Bathurst, but it might come down to who can survive the one hour race. I mean, uh, as was mentioned, uh, you, you grab a, a little bit of loose back end up on the mountain and that could end your race very quickly. Uh, so we'll be seeing how that shakes up for our drivers. Actually, uh, McGooley just grabbed pole position, uh, was able to hold on to that extra time with a 2.12.3. Uh, and that is going to put him just the little bit that he needed ahead of Conway uh, up uh, 200. So that, Pole position is hotly, hotly contested right now. Yeah, it definitely is. We're seeing a car go off on the chase there in front of Brock McDude. 
you know, just showing how hard these guys are pushing. Now, Brock here is uh, up a couple tenths. We're going to see if he's able to pick up a position or perhaps two as he's crossing the line. He's going to pick up a position, not quite enough to get him above Romero there, but does slide him into ninth place as we're watching a couple of our last guys finish up their laps here. Of course, Quiglia now in the BMW. He was four tenths up. He lost just a touch of time, but hey, He's only less than a tenth, uh, you know, in range of the leader. And as he slides around the chase here, picks up a tenth, loses a couple. He's now two tenths up on his lap, and that will be more than enough to slide him in if he can get a good break into here. About a tenth up on the lap, and he's going to be coming across the line here briefly. Can he do it? And he does. 2 12 three, three, zero puts him uh, what, four thousandths or four hundredths or so above second place. So scrapping all the way down the line. I think Conway went back to the pits just too short uh, of a time. Did not give him. He should have went for one more lap. But, you know, in the end, P3 is not a bad position to finish there in qualifying as we are watching, I believe, what should effectively be our final car if I am not mistaken, uh, coming down, I have a couple more cars on the grid. I, I, I apologize that are behind this gentleman here. A couple more cars cross the line, but this is Bailey Collins. Again, in another Mercedes, the 888. He's going to be finishing up his lap, currently a few tenths up, and that should put him potentially up into the P12-13 range if he can hold on to this. And uh, he's going to be coming across the line here shortly. And then only one car left, I believe, out on the track in P24. Also a few tenths up, about halfway down his lap in the number 31. Should be our last car. As, nope, nope, he had already invalidated. So here it is. Collins did make it up to 11th ahead of Mr. Ryan Gill, pushing Gill back to 12th. So Gill will be the second Camaro on the grid. And not too bad for them. Uh, all things considered. So going down the line right now, Guiglia did pull out that P1 again in his number 18 BMW with McCooley, Conway, Ryan Meenan, Woost, finishing out the top five. And this should be one hell of a race. I'm really, really curious to see how these Mercs and BMWs do uh, as they, as they, you know, we actually start the race here. It's just, it's going to be an interesting one, Nick. I, I think that the Camaro has great pace. It's got so much torque in that car. Even if it doesn't have quite the top speed that, that the Merc or the BMW do, I don't believe. Um, it's got so much torque, and I really think that across the top of the mountain, if they can get a good run with those Camaros coming out of the elbow down onto the Conrad straight out, out, on, the, out on the back end of the field, I think there's some potential there in the slipstream for them to maybe come up and uh, and 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 get some passing done because, you know, uh, while we don't want to see you know one car model take over the the top ten altogether, uh, you know it's our first GT4 race. It's here for everybody to test out and kind of get some uh, kind of get some knowledge down. So that's really what we're here for today. Yeah, absolutely, and uh, I think we're going to see plenty of uh, one-on-ones between these makes. I mean, we see. Uh, in the uh, top nines all BMW and Mercedes, but there are a few Chevys in the mid pack actually uh, I'm seeing four currently um, So I mean, I think we will see those battles shake out uh, as we get into the race um, and kind of see how far people spread out uh, We are about three minutes away from the formation lap uh, Being run around Bathurst, which uh, takes a little longer than some other tracks But it's always a good time that we can uh, sit here and do our favorite game Which is sit and talk about liveries uh, in the top three, um, I mean, there is there is the lime green with the black stripes on the BMW. Uh, I mean, w also worth noting that the top three are all within less than a tenth of each other. Uh, so we were mentioning consistency. Uh, I mean, they, they showed us some, some consistency. Like, they were, they were fighting for pole position, and they were literally trading hundreds of a second uh, back and forth uh, between each other to take it and that that changed hands uh, a few times in qualifying as they set their uh, last laps in qualifying uh so i mean the the consistency is there and uh that was interesting to see that shake out in such a small amount of time uh but i mean the the car that sticks out for me right now actually is i believe that is the the car number six the uh, 48 in that like lighter blue like uh i want to call that like a like like ocean water blue uh, so that one's kind of sticking out from the grid, uh, uh, of course, with all the uh, lime green options that we're actually seeing. Uh, lots of 
cool liveries out there. Uh, any uh, favorites from you, Mike? You know, now that you mention it, why, why, why is there so many Lion Green liveries? Not that I don't like it, but like, yeah, there's just a ton of them for some reason. I think that, you know, the guys, uh, they're out here with these GT4s uh, with all those Lime Green liveries, and they like it. And uh, before we get into liveries further, though, uh, ladies and gentlemen, we have a little bit of a special guest now decided to join us in the box with the name of Random Call Sign. How you doing there, RC? Hi there. Welcome, everyone. Thank you very much for having me. I'm just trying to find the correct server. I'll be <laughs> right back, right there. No worries, the yeah. So, ra Random Call Sign uh, decided he was a little bored this evening, and so since me and Nick were alone in the box, we invited him along to join us as we are getting ready to start the grid here for our first GT4 race here at Bathurst Mount Panorama. Of course, again, the GT4 has launched this past Wednesday, guys. This will be our first GT4 outing, besides for some community races that we did Wednesday evening, and a little bit of a, a little bit of a test race for all these drivers this weekend. Not everybody quite used to the cars. Probably doesn't have a setup completely dialed in yet or anything. Should be a great time. And uh, obviously, here in the top ten, we have nine out of ten Mercedes and BMWs. Three BMWs, six Mercedes, finished out by number 10 Springer in the Chevrolet Camaro. Um, RC, I know you're connecting there. Uh, have you, you had some time with the GT4s yet? Yes, I have. It's been quite interesting. Um, I do enjoy very much this uh, new DLC. All cars have their own spirit. They, they drive very differently from each other. You have a favorite so far? Yes, uh, the 570S, uh, mm. the 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 KTM crossbow and the Janetta. Those uh, are see, my favorites. I'm a huge fan of Janettas in general. Um, I, I I have to say that while I was playing Project Cars uh, over the years, the the one of my favorite cars to drive was was both the the GT Mini, the GT5, and the GT4 Janettas. Um, I was a little disappointed to find it was right-hand drive personally because every time I get in a right-hand drive car all of the Bentley I just hit every curve possibly available, uh, but I do uh, enjoy the Janetta. It's, it's definitely a very fun fun little car um, And uh, you know, it's it's an interesting concept because uh, <laughs> These are so different that It's are so different than the GT3s that it's difficult to say, you know, hey, I really like McLaren in the GT3. I really like McLaren in general, and then you jump over to the GT4, and it just drives so differently um, inside the the uh, uh, the, you know, the GT4 version, GT3 version. Same thing with the Mercedes. You know, obviously we were talking about a little bit of difference with the GT3 or Mercedes earlier, Nick. Uh, you know, the the GT3 is reasonable out of understeer in comparison, and so now we jump into the GT4, and even though it's still Mercedes, it's a very different color. Yeah, absolutely. Yes, it's very... Sorry, you can go first. Oh, no, uh, uh, just uh, the, the GT4 cars, uh, from what I've seen, just seem to be just a little uh, lighter on their feet uh, compared to the GT3s that just seem very planted. Uh, so it, it, it makes for very in uh, interesting racing because, I mean, the, the back end that, uh, uh, you know, cuts loose on GT4 cars is something that uh, we've come to expect from, like, the... Porsche uh, Cup Car Series, uh, where they're battling the car more than the track, where the other drivers, uh, you know, just even keep it stable. Um, so that's always an interesting thing uh, to move to, to the GT4s, and they they handle um, just they, they they just don't seem as planted, and maybe uh, the drivers don't feel as uh, secure in them quite yet. Uh, and uh, as was pointed out, I mean, it seems to be a pattern that they seem to be a little more oversteery versus understeery, which is something that we've come to expect from certain uh, models, uh, just in the uh, GT, uh, GT3 class, especially if you don't have the perfect setup uh, for, uh, for uh, particular tracks or even uh, certain conditions, uh, understeer seems to be a common complaint. Um, so it, uh, that shift to oversteer seems to be a uh, common change when we're looking at the uh, GT4 class now. 
Yeah, absolutely. And that's something to be said as well about these GT4 cars is they, again, they have less downforce, right? So as you're coming across your, your quick corners, especially, uh, there is a lot more of that, that sliding around a little bit of oversteer that, that can happen. And as we saw a lot of the guys coming down into the chase, you know, off the bottom of the Conrad straight there, hard break into there. And it is so easy to get loose, uh, to you know in the in the in those corners if you're not careful so you know this is going to be an interesting race for these guys because top of the mountain is always a deadly thing and then you add the fact that we're running gt4 instead of gt3 here at bathurst and even then more so dangerous because as we all know one little incident up the top of the mountain can cause a huge backup uh <laughs> You, you get one car sideways, there ain't much room to go. Uh, I'm sure that, uh, you know, RC, you probably got a little bit of experience racing across the top of the mountain there. <laughs> there and all Only of a sudden, you can look around. Three, yeah. <laughs> uh, a little mistake. It's it's very much like Macau. Everybody will be hitting you, and everybody will be hitting everybody else. Yeah, exactly. So these guys are stacking up two by two here as we come across to the chase. Quiglia, or Quiglia, sorry, uh... I think is what we're going to call that. Alexander in the uh, BMW number 18 going to lead them down through the final corner to the first race of RCI's GT4. And, of course, GT4 will be a feature here the next couple weeks. We have a Monday championship upcoming that will start this week. Uh, for that, that is just about full. Nick will be running that one. In fact, we got about 40 cars coming across five rounds. But for now, Bathurst is where we are at. And they are coming down across the start finish line. And here will be the green flag here shortly as we will get this race going. Again, quickly uh, coming through. There's the green flag. And somebody with a drive through in the background. But no worries. They're coming down the first corner side by side. Four deep, two wide all the way down as Quiglia and McCooley look like they're going to take off and go straight up that, that first mountain straight. Putting the distance behind Conway and Ryan Meenan already as Conway and Ryan Meenan still side by side as they're coming down into the into the uh, the, the end of the mountain straight. McDooley going to pull out, try to go along the outside. Not the best place to do it here. It's a very difficult spot to pass. However, he is going to give it a run. Runs a little wide, and Wigley is going to still hold on to that P1 as they're going to come across the mountain for the first time here, Nick. Yeah, absolutely. That was a solid start, and you saw Guglia and... Uh, I'm so sorry, my name went just crazy. Uh, but, 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 yeah, uh, uh, but position one and two, just pulling ahead and getting that distance and trying to ride that slip chain, go, go for an early pass. Uh, not a great place going up the hill, but possibly down the hill. You can try to grab a little bit of ground as uh, Wilga is actually going to distance himself and actually pull out uh, quite a bit of a pocket here uh, as he's coming to the top of the mountain, coming down. Uh, and if he can hold on to that, that is going to be uh, ideal, uh, I would argue, uh, you know, just to try to uh, distance himself from the pack a little bit, uh, not worrying about a slipstream pass, uh, uh, especially in the mountain where that's going to be dangerous and could lead to something a little crazy. Uh, Harry Conway trying to hang on uh, to position two, uh, Miguli, uh, as they're coming down the mountain, uh, trying to find a little bit of space uh, and trying to get by, but I think they're just going to fall in line as Guglia is going to just run away with it uh, here at Bathurst for lap one. Yeah, absolutely. It looked reasonably clean across the top of the mountain. I, I was kind of glancing at my own screen here just to see if we can find anything. Definitely a couple cars sideways. There's definitely some scrapping going on near the back of the field. P25's got an awesome battle going, and there's just a pack of cars back through about 15, back to 20. But, of course, right now here is Springer going off the track in the 58 Camaro. They're going to kind of ride the grass back onto there. And, uh, well, I mean, hey, that's one way to do it. If you miss the braking line, uh, you go through the dirt. Your tires are going to be a little dirty. But in the end, uh, you know, at least he didn't smash from the wall, I guess. So uh, it could be worse. And I'm sure that it will be because this race will, that Bathurst here, will not give up. As we now switch it over to Gillian Ryan Meenan in the number or sorry, the number 23 in fourth place, uh, BMW, and of course the BMW Mercs are holding P1 for eight here still, RC. So lots of uh, lots of that still happening. Of course, quickly a uh, 1.6 seconds up. Can anybody catch anything? As the the DLC is quite new, I'm I'm finding it very interesting to see how the cars are uh, behaving here at Bathurst. Bathurst does have a few different areas very big straights and uh, you need a car that, to, that needs to be balanced on the top of the mountain 
uh, and I'm looking at the Camaro. I was looking at the Camaro previously. It does have a lot of puff over the streets, but it kind of feels lacking when a corner is in front of them. It, it doesn't surprise me as much. I mean, having, having driven a Camaro, my mom actually owns one, not, <laughs> not nearly as much as this. She's got a little base model RS Camaro. Uh, you know, it feels big, and I will tell you, every every time you get into that car, it just feels like it's big and heavy. You know, it's got that big 6.2 liter V8 in the GT4 version here. Um, of course, all GT4 cars have to be naturally aspirated, if I am not mistaken, and the Camaro is at minimum, uh, you know, it's got that big old grunt to it, so it's going to take off after a corner, but it, it is one of those, and it feels big coming around. I ran a few laps. Every time I broke into the elbow, man, uh, it was just... Okay, we might hit that wall. You know, we, we just had you have that feeling because that thing is just so heavy. <laughs> but uh, we are seeing Brock McDude here fight out, uh, not quite able to get the slipstream down onto Collins here in front of him. They are going to be approaching the chase here. Don't think he's going to be able to outbreak him this particular lap, but this will be our fight for 11th and 12th position. And of course, that is Springer that we're seeing in the Camaro there in front of them as we're switching back now to Zelinski back in P18. And that is an Alpine directly to his left. Uh, I, I believe that. I believe that's an Alpine, right? Uh, 570. Yeah, 570. There you go. Um, and, and, and the 570 behind him. So that's 18, 19, 20 here. Oh, that's a BMW. I'm sorry. Not an Alpine. Some reason I can fix them up, uh, but that is for P18 here. There are still four cars, five cars stacked up there, and these guys are going to be scrapping all race long. 40, uh, just about 40 cars on the track. Uh, well, this is a pretty big track. You're going to see a lot of these packs form up over the next few laps, and we'll get these big two, three, four, five car battles all race long. Nick. Yeah, absolutely. <laughs> and uh, as as we've seen in a. Um, uh, a few of these battles so far, I mean, uh, catching grass or catching a, a a curb or something a little sideways is what's causing a lot of the passing to happen. Uh, it's actually not them quite speeding along. I think it's uh, each other waiting for uh, the other driver to make a mistake, which is probably more likely than even grabbing a uh, an advantage, uh, even in these uh, slip, uh, slipstream packs. Uh, as we're actually jumping back over to position two, is still holding a pretty solid pack between uh, two, three, four, and five, it looks like. Uh, but Guglia running, running away with it currently, uh, trying to just, he, he found that space and found a rhythm. He was actually, even with how much time he's ahead, he was, he was on top of his best lap uh, again uh, the last time that he just went around. Uh, so, I mean, we're barely six, seven minutes into this race and is already finding time like that, that is going to be huge for him. So if he can keep that line clean and uh, you know maintain that that distance until he gets caught up, caught up in some traffic at some point, I'm sure is what will happen. Uh, you know uh, that's something that he's going to hang on to and try to hang on to pole position uh, without too much competition. Uh, but as we've seen previously, and uh, what I expect to see from here, uh, McGooley and Conway could be fighting for each other, or even uh, Ryan Meenan in fourth could try to find some ground and find that slipstream and in them fighting each other, might be able to get some ground and try to gain on Uglia up in first position. Uh, lots of grass being thrown. Uh, again, like, uh, really pushing the boundaries. I mean, we, we already saw a few uh, penalties roll out from uh, from the sim. Uh, uh, I saw a couple of them uh, violating just uh, track limits. Uh, and there was one speeding in the pit lanes. I didn't quite catch who it was, but there was a speeding in the pit lanes penalty that went out. Uh, so, uh, lots of early ones. I mean, we're, we're not even 10 minutes into this race and we're already seeing stuff like that happen. Uh, so that's going to be something that's going to shake up the grid quite a bit. Uh, as Conway, um, still trying to find that opening, uh, uh, as, as was mentioned, that, that uh, section 1 and 2, honestly, uh, really tough to find that space, uh, kind of waiting for a mistake or something to jump on. Uh, I mean, we know that Harry Conway is a very fast driver, has the pace to uh, overtake McGooley, uh, but just path, uh, Bathurst is very punishing. If you're looking for a pass, the, t the, the track is just so tight, and uh, a mistake could be deadly. Uh, so, I mean, we're just waiting it out and seeing uh, kind of who makes that mistake first. 
are still watching on board with Conway here. And there's a little bit of that mistake there from McGooley. He kind of ran over a little bit of the chicane there as we're watching on board with Harry Conway. And a little bit of a mistake. Luckily, he was able to hold on to it. Of course, these CT4s I have found, um, I, I don't know about you, RC, because I've only ran a little bit. I know you probably ran a little more. They seem to handle the curbs really well, uh, and, and at least in my very limited experience. I've, so when you run it over curbs, they don't seem to shoot you quite as much as some of the GT3s will. Have you had any experience with that so far? Uh, yeah, that's basically my my experience as well, with the exception of the KTM. The KTM seems to be a little more on the edge when you go over the curbs, but everything else seems to glide over them. Um, the Camaro, we were talking about the Camaro, the Camaro just munches up those curbs. Uh, the AMG is super chill over them. Uh, I didn't find a car, except for the KTM, that was particular difficult to drive over curbs, and especially in Misano, I've done a few tests in Misano. Over, uh, pretty much all of them were happy to cut uh, those corners going over curbs, going over the sausages, with no problem whatsoever. Yeah, Misano's actually a good test for that too, because of course, I mean, besides for maybe infamous Laguna sausages uh, ooh, a little bit of a scrap here going on between Collins and I believe that's uh, I believe that's McDude and Springer a little bit of a bump there coming out from the uh, Mercedes in front of Collins and he's kind of knocked out of the way there a little bit a little bit of a little bit of an aggressive aggressive race in there from these guys would love to see him bumping and banging each other uh, but not causing any problems so that's that's solid we haven't seen too many incidents I'm sure there has been some perhaps on the other side of the track, but nothing that we have seen too much yet. But, you know, as, as we were watching earlier, McGooley in the last lap, of course, uh, just about roughly two minutes ago, as we're now circling back to them, you know, this is what started us on the conversation about the curves, is him running over the, that curb into the chicane didn't really seem like it affected him too much. And uh, as, as RC was just saying there, you know, good test for that at Mizano, because Mizano's got a lot of curbs. And, you know, if you're out there running across the curves at Pisano and your car's doing okay, you're probably doing pretty good. We see him smashing that curb with his left tires again, and it, he just keeps going. And this is some good pace coming out. Uh, they actually ran faster laps last lap than Wiglia did uh, by not too much. McGooley and Conway actually ran the exact same lap time, 213.599. The exact same lap time coming out between the two of them in these Mercedes. And Wiglia ran a 213.623. So while it's not too much faster, it's enough that they're keeping pace with them. So hopefully, if they can stop scrapping here, they should be able to to, to maybe catch up as we're seeing a little bit of a look there from coming out of the slipstream. The question is, can you get it coming into the chase? It is not the easiest place to do that side-by-side, -side, but he's going to come in side-by-side. -side. That's McCooley on the outside, and he has got the move done. Conway sliding pass into second position. And as I say that, of course, they're going to keep scrapping because what are these guys? Racing drivers. <laughs> Of course they're going to start racing each other. Who, who are we kidding? And actually, we're switching back now to it looks like this is fourth and fifth position. I believe this is Brian Meenan along with Roman, uh, uh, Roman uh, Romenko. Uh, and Killian Meenan slides past him. I think that that was a fight where Romenko was trying to take over Killian. Uh, we didn't catch the very beginning of it. So it's Killian Meenan. Ryan Mina does hold on to fourth position there, but they are going to keep fighting because that is just, you know, two, three, four, five, all the way down as we're now over to Holmes with the three or five seventy outs of Kianka and Holmes not able to get the move down on Kianka there. And of course, Holmes is a, oop, actually he slid back past. I'm not sure if Kianka decided to pull over. He decided he was just a little, a little slower than the man behind or what. Uh, decided to move over, but Kianka was the am driver in that situation. So, or sorry, Kianka was the pro driver in that situation. Uh, so he is down, kind of down the field a little bit for the pro guys. Most of the pro guys have filtered up, but we have this man right here, Alfonso Fernandez, in the 99 Mercedes is leading the AM class at the moment for Romero and not too, too far behind. Because that is a pack of four there where there is two AMs and two pro drivers kind of uh, fighting each other here. Is coming across the mountain about 13, or 12 and a half minutes actually into this race now. And kind of like I said a couple minutes ago, Nick, we're, we're seeing those little, you know, two, three, four car battles start stacking up here as we do often with Bassers. We're seeing, uh, was that Killian Wright meeting out in front uh, in front of them that got a little sideways? Uh, I don't think so. I think that's a back marker. Jake, can you switch the uh, time screen over for me? Um, I think it's a back marker that got a little, got a little off there, but uh, <laughs> yeah, okay, that's back marker there. He's sliding across. Um, but yeah, so we're seeing some of them catch up some of the back markers. This, of course, a bathroom. It's a hard place to pass. 
and it's going to you know throw more of a wrench into it as well. Yeah, absolutely. And uh, but the really cool thing is we're uh, coming up on 15 minutes into this race, and I think the confidence in these drivers has increased just a little bit. Uh, you know, they're they're throwing it around for a few laps, and they're they're starting to get that groove. We saw Harry Conway make that very clean pass, uh, and uh, actually just a lot of passes happen very quickly uh, within a few seconds of each other. And that's the kind of thing that I was uh, looking forward to seeing. I think everyone was kind of shaking it out and wanted that space uh, that, that they were looking for, uh, especially at Bathurst. Uh, you know, you're, you're talking about getting in these uh, packs of cars, um, and that's kind of where you want to be. You want to be making uh, uh, smart passes, but they got to be quick and they got to be skillful uh, because Bathurst will punish you if you get it wrong. Uh, so those those passing points are going to be huge uh, as we're actually jumping back to Ryan Meenan, who's getting pressure again from Roman Echo, who's looking to take that position back. He's currently on the outside uh, coming up to this corner here. It is actually going to go really wide, way wide, uh, and it's going to lose all that ground. And this is exactly what we're talking about. You can lose it uh, just a little bit and lose all of that precious time that you were fighting for in that particular battle. Uh, jumping over to Dustin Wust. Uh, in the 21 BMW, looks like here. Uh, also going a little bit wide, and that is going to cost him a little bit of time going up the mountain here, uh, and it's going to possibly lose that position, uh, looks like, to uh, who he's fighting for in that particular it's pack. Gil, Gil uh, Springer range there. Yeah, yes, excellent. Uh, so, so yeah, the, I, I, uh, also it was cool to see that there is the mix-up with the two leaders in the AM class uh, up with a, a few... Uh, Pro guys, uh, Ryan Gill and Wust in the uh, 11 BMW and the 27 Chevy, uh, trying to fight for those positions. Uh, also worth noting, uh, Gill trying to hold on uh, to the top 10 in the lone Chevy there, uh, and is probably kind of learning uh, how it stacks up against the other cars in this class, uh, as uh, RC mentioned, might be losing a little bit maybe up in the mountain and uh, the, the goal of the Chevy is trying to just fight your way and uh, use that, that awesome amount of torque it's got to kind of slingshot itself down the mountain and uh, grab some time in the last sector uh, as fighting up the mountain uh, might be losing just a little bit to the other cars but I mean I, I am curious to see how that really shakes out and, and, and uh, see how the different cars stack up to each other in the different sectors. Uh, as Bathurst does nicely uh, show that for us, the elevation changes, the highly technical part in the mountain, but these long straights and really see uh, how much speed they can hold on uh, to take positions from each other. Looking at uh, what the Camaros are doing, they are having a lot of trouble going on Conrad as opposite to Mountain Straight. Mountain Straight does have the Hell Corner, which is far easier than uh, Forest Elbow to get out and to maintain, to give yourself some momentum, a good exit. Um, we can see definitely the Camaros going up the hill uh, at a mountain straight and having a good pace. And we see now a wipeout from that P Santos. That's the Mercedes, I believe that's Fernandez then, the 99 if I'm not mistaken. I think he is pulling up off the track. Uh, yeah that, yeah, that is indeed Fernandez. So I'm wonder, I, I'm not sure what happened there. We didn't quite catch it, but it looks like I think he broke a little late and he smashed into the wall. It looks like he was having to pull over and uh, perhaps had a little bit too much damage. He may end up having to tow himself back to the pits, also known as escape back to the pits. Uh, and I believe he has indeed done so. Actually, he has left the, left the server. I think he had too much damage to continue. So unfortunate for him, he was doing very well. He was one of the AM drivers up in the top 10. So that is going to cost him the race, and that is just showing right there, RC, just how deadly Bathurst can be. You get little thing wrong, and that's your race. Absolutely. He missed the corner at Griffith's Bend, uh, missed the breaking point, and went directly into the wall. It's, uh, it's a corner that does not take any prisoners. It's very easy to go wide. It's very easy to lose your breaking point and go directly into the wall. So terminal damage for him too bad despite having an excellent race yeah, it's gonna be unfortunate for him however uh something to mention here is that uh we we just mentioned a couple minutes ago and we're not currently watching him but ryan gill has made up uh quite a few positions uh he, he of course up into the top 10 in the camaro that we were speaking of earlier but of course wiglia here it is right here 3.6 3.7 seconds up above p2 he is 
indeed picking up a little bit of that time and, you know i think that he he's not running that much faster than conway mccooley but the problem is conway mccooley and and even ryan meaning behind them now that meaning is a couple seconds behind to be fair you know they're scrapping and so he's wiggly is just out here just pulling away from these guys and kind of like nick said earlier with this clean air that he has granted he is catching up to lap traffic here and that's going to be interesting he's got lap traffic about two seconds ahead just one for now but you know when he catches up to that lap track if he gets stuck across the straight uh or sorry across um across the top of the mountain very well these guys conway mccooley could catch him but actually mccooley looks like he had a little bit of a problem because he actually dropped back a couple uh, a second or so away from conway so now looking at collins here and mcdude fight we were watching earlier and that is ryan gill there ahead of them this is the last battle for the top 10 collins and mcdude coming no that's gonna hit the wall there collins just scrapes the wall able to keep it keep a hold of it and stay ahead of mcdude there but that is just how deadly that 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 corner is i believe that's a that's the cutting there right you just catch that ever so slightly wrong and you can just tap the wall and again this is where we saw the 99 a couple laps ago uh, uh, uh you know kind of break off and smash into the wall but good hole by collins there to not not spin out and he is going to continue down and uh, you know hopefully stay ahead of mcdude there though uh i, I don't know i kind of give mcdude the edge just for his name right guys yeah so yeah, the next one's right the name <laughs> <laughs> I don't think RC was here quite yet. We were we were discussing McDude and Billy Octane earlier uh, about how they've got some of the some of the two best names for racing. <laughs> uh, but Octane, oh, wait, was, was that Octane back in thirty first? Actually, I think that uh, Jake just flashed. He must have had some problems at some point that we didn't catch either, because Octane's a, usually a pretty quick driver, so he struggled a little bit. And uh, we see that the back into first place there for a moment, quickly. Uh, he was ahead of that lap traffic already, so he has already put a little bit of distance there. He's now almost five seconds or so ahead of P2, and that's that's constant. Conway and McGooley are, are just losing time, losing time. Ryan Mina has even lost a little bit of time off the back of McGooley here in his BMW, so that is uh, you know costing them out there, out there kind of scrapping with each other. Unfortunate for them, but hopefully you know I mean hey, 40 minutes left in this race, it's Bathurst, boys. Anything can happen. Absolutely, and I I did want to point out that Conway is actually up quite a bit over uh, Uglia, closing that distance that uh, was up uh, almost a three seconds at one point. Uh, Conway has broken away from the pack a little bit and has fought his way up. He's now within uh, less than a second, uh, was almost within uh, uh, half a second there for a moment, uh, but now Uglia uh, must have kind of sensed that because now he's up on his own personal delta. Uh, by a few tenths here. Um, so as they kind of push their way up into the mountain, um, I think this is going to shake out to be a battle for pole position. Uh, Conway, uh, not probably not happy about him grabbing so much early lead, but that is not uh, deterring him at all, uh, as I think this is going to shake out to be a battle within a lap or two, uh, as he's going to be looking for the back end of Google to fight for uh, first position. It's very possible here. We know Conway is one of those drivers that can have the pace to get up there. So, you know, if he can keep it consistent, then he's kind of not scrapping too much with McCooley. Very well could catch up. And, of course, still watching Collins do it here. Speaking of scrapping, you know, these two guys in these Mercedes are not giving up. And we're going to see these guys fight probably for the next potentially 38 minutes. And, uh, you know, it's always nice to see these guys fight. I think in the same cars. I always like watching different manufacturers fight, but these little two-car battles, uh, I think, are always really interesting uh, when they're when they're the same manufacturers because you know that they, they're evenly matched. Besides, maybe their setups, so they have to find an advantage on the track rather than on their car. And I think that's interesting as we go back to Ryan Mean in here uh, in the 23 BMW as we watch Romenko again, still fighting with him. And of course, we keep coming back to these cameras and we say, yep, they're still fighting, guys. Okay, next. Yep, they're still fighting, guys. <laughs> I think this is gonna, just a pattern we're going to find here, RC. It's going to be very difficult to overtake both Romanenko and McDude doing all that they can to overtake. I've, I was going to talk about uh, Collins uh, hitting the wall various times, just scraping by. I'm just thinking that as the time progresses, and the tires start to give up i think we're gonna see a wipe out as i've seen him uh, scratch the the walls 
about three or four times between corner six and corner nine. So at forty corner up to Frog Hollow, um, I'm thinking that's gonna happen sooner or later. Hopefully, yeah, I'm actually, wrong. Oh, hopefully not, but for now we're seeing, look at this, there is barely a breath between these guys as they're coming in the cutting. That Mercedes is trying to dip under the inside. He's going to get on the side of the Killian Mina there. Not quite enough, though, but they are coming up through the top of the mountain, uh, top of the mountain now, and he is going to try and make that work. It is not the easiest place to pass, and he is going to have to fall back in line. But there for a second, that looked like that Romenko was going to potentially be able to get a nose in there, but it did not last long, as we see Mina just barely scraped the wall there as well, so... Uh, the point you bring up, RC, is is, is a, something I want to pose to you, actually, because, like I said, I I hardly have much experience racing these GT4s yet. I know you have a little bit. How do the tires do with these cars in comparison to the GT3, you know, over the course of an hour? Uh, I haven't tried an hour. Over course in 20 minutes, it's not very... It doesn't give you all the answers that you need. Over course of 20 minutes, they did last very well, but not too sure how uh, they are going to be. What One thing that I noticed, though, is that the setups from default coming from Kunos are about three... Oh, I think Madhu overtook he did. Collins. He did. Uh, for his elbow, he went wide. Collins uh, missed a breaking point. I think you locked the tires. And then Madhu just said, thank you very much. Yeah, we're going to see a little bit of a replay of it here. Uh, so this is Madhu in the back here. We're gonna watch these guys come down into the force elbow. There's the dipper as they come across. Here's gonna break into the force elbow. Yeah, he broke really late there and he just went wide as we've seen the TV camera. Good shot from that camera. Just scrapes the wall again, as RC was just mentioned earlier. So many scrapes on the wall for him, but there it is, McDude getting past. And I'm wondering now if he's got the pace to take off in front of him as he has been right on the back for quite a few laps. As we're now back to McCooley and Ryan Meaden uh, with that's a, a lap car out in front of them, and of course Conway now has uh, kind of pieced out from them as well. Still staying about three seconds back from Wiglia, but he's uh, he's kind of making up a little bit of that time. But yeah, interesting with, with Collins, I think you hit it right on the head, RC. It's, you know, you, you keep touching the wall, you keep touching the wall, you keep making those mistakes. There it is. Sooner or later, it's going to be a big one. Uh, it kind of felt that it was a hard hit, um, but... We have no way to see if he has actual damage that is going to uh, be detrimental to his race. Uh, but it did seem that it was a bit of a hard one there. Yeah, absolutely. I, I hopefully it won't be too much, you know, if he because there is no mandatory pit stop in this race, so you don't want to have to waste time going down the pit lane if you don't have to. But in the end, you know, hey, if you got damage, you're going to lose more time on the track, especially with 35 minutes to go. As we're watching the back of Ryan Meaden's car here, back to Romenko through with our wing camera and this is just a great shot coming down the mountain because you can see how close these guys are getting and there he is he's gonna dip onto the outside a little bit as they're gonna come through the dipper and he is not gonna be able to stay side by side as this is very difficult to stay side by side into the elbow not making the mistake that we just saw with Collins earlier and Ryan Meenan's gonna scrape it by one more lap he's got a little bit of the slipstream coming down the Conrad straight as well so I don't think that Romenko is going to be able to use his slipstream down into the chase to pass him this particular lap. But these guys are definitely not giving up. He's very close to the back of him still, even without all that. So I would not be surprised to see him go for another one here in about, oh, 75 seconds when they get to the top of the mountain. What do you guys think? <laughs> yeah, absolutely. I think so as well. I'm super impressed with the, the way that the AMG is handling those corners. I was, I was always thinking, oh, it has such a big engine at the front. Uh, it's probably going to have a lot of understeer, but it seems to me that they have the setup just tuned right in the correct way, and he's able to keep up with the BMWs. Oh, oh and there's going to be a little bit of a contact. Sideways. Oh, man, that is unfortunate. It looks like Ryan Meenan just, he cut just to the left there, and that's going to be Romenko tapping him in the back, and I think Romenko's going to let him back by. He knew that he tapped him in the back, so good sportsmanship by him to let Ryan Meenan go back by, but oof, that was, uh, I, that's the nature of close racing right there. Eventually, something happens, right? Yeah, absolutely, and uh, I wanted to know, because uh, I've just been, I'm, I've been watching uh, Romanenko on my personal screen, and uh, actually be fighting uh, uh, Ryan Mina and kind of beating his pace 
uh, as they climb up the mountain, but then Ryan Meenan kind of beats them off uh, on the back straight. So maybe just the BMW is holding a little more speed uh, coming out of the uh, uh, last couple corners up in the mountain there. And that's kind of what he's riding on. Uh, as, as, as we saw, there was a little bit of contact there. Excellent sportsmanship to give it back and say, no, I'm going to earn this because I think I've got more pace on you. Uh, so he's going to look for that clean opening that I think is going to keep happening. Uh, uh, as I just mentioned, uh, just up in the mountain. Actually, they're gonna come up on a yellow flag a little bit here. Maybe there's something to give them a little bit of traffic. Hopefully, it isn't anything too serious. So it looks like already actually clear. So, uh, but yeah, I mean, like this this battle is just showing us like this is the the, the kind of battle that we expect from Bathurst, uh, uh, or, or even more from the uh, GT4 cars uh, with drivers at this level. Uh, and I think that fight is not gonna calm down until uh, the 48 actually. Uh, overtakes and gets that ground. Um, other than that, I mean, uh, uh, our cameraman switching back over to uh, Fridell down in 27th. Uh, looks like he's got Billy Octane on the back of him. Uh, Billy Octane, uh, not sure Whoa. what happened. Actually, he's going to throw it completely, and Octane's just going to slip right by uh, as if that was something planned almost. Actually, we're going to get a catch an instant replay of that just a little bit loses the back end and spins it and octane passes uh with a very clean pass there that uh would have probably just scared me to death honestly if i was in the car uh luckily this is uh sim racing uh <laughs> not real racing because that probably would have been terrifying there. Oh, yes. yeah, seriously. a good hold by by uh, i think his name is Fernelli though i mean like he that could have been much worse he managed to kind of keep it straight to an extent, but definitely lost some time there. Billy Octane able to slide past him, but you know, I don't think he was sideways in the middle of the road at least, so that's good on him to kind of keep it straight and probably you know, able to keep going after that. Didn't look like it was too hard of a hit, just hit the grass a little too much. You know, we talked about these cars can run over those curbs pretty well, but you hit that grass and you're definitely still going to get a little loose, especially coming around the S's at the top of the mountain here at Bathurst. So now looking at Brock McDude and Collins again. Of course, Brock McDude slid past Collins here a few laps going into the elbow, and uh, he is looking for his way back past these guys still, uh, si or, you know, uh, uh, nose to tail. Even even McDude being in front now, Collins does definitely have the pace to stay with him, so would not be, I feel like I keep saying this, would not be surprised to see these guys keep scrapping for the next 29 and a half minutes now, just over halfway in this GT4 race here at Bathurst. I hope I'm not yeah. the only one uh, looking at the bigger GT4 cars and having a vibe of Super V8, but I'll be uh, far slower. Uh, they kind of handle like that. They, they are a bit floaty. They have a lot of grunt, but they still are able to clear those corners like nothing happens. That is the best description I have heard of these so far, RC. <laughs> I like it. Well, I'm glad I'm not the only one then thinking about uh, the GT4 Zero at Bathurst in that way. The GT3s don't feel like it. It feels a little more like Formula, almost too much on rails. The, you know, the Super V8s, they, they, they move around more. Uh, the GT4s do feel, for at least for me, the bigger ones, uh, do feel for me that way. Yeah, I agree, because the GT3s, I mean, they have so much downforce uh, in, in the GT3 cars. I mean, don't take me wrong. They, not, not to say that they don't get squirrely and everything, but, you know, these GT4s are, are you know, almost to road spec is is how they kind of, you know, spec these cars out. That's kind of the ruling that the GT4 gives them SRO or, I, I, I think it's SRO is the parent organization for GT World Challenge Europe, right? Um, you know, they, they spec these out to be almost like road cars, of course. They have other things in them, you know, they got the roll cage, they've got electronics, there's still TC and ABS on most of them, because if anybody has driven the Maserati so far in this GT4, it does not have TC and ABS, and it nice definitely drives car. like it awesome drift car. I would not be surprised to see uh, Matt Samuel floats around our Discord quite a bit, a former drift champion. I would not be surprised to see him uh, out there doing some laps in the Maserati at some point, because he is the man we would want to see in that. I believe, if I'm not mistaken, he's participating in the Monday Championship, so uh, Nick, you might get to see him on Monday and see uh, see what he's doing. I do not know what car he's driving, but we are watching Ryan Gill here. Um, he's got a back marker there behind him, so not quite a fight for position, but Ryan Gill has been making up a little bit of time uh here and there he got a bad lap last lap at 215.5 but he 
he has been running reasonably consistent in the 214. So if he can keep it consistent here, he I don't think he's going to catch Fernandez. Fernandez has just got all kinds of pace, but he might end up catching. Uh, uh, oh, oh, that's right. Fernandez is stuck on my screen. Um, he's the one who retired earlier. I apologize. Uh, he might catch Stephen Moose, though, however, because Stephen Moose and Gill have around the same pace. We're seeing they come across that dipper right there, and you can see the left front of that Camaro just lift off the ground ever so slightly as that huge dip right there kind of comes across. And here is Wiglia. We do see, however, Nick, uh, 2.9 seconds that gap there for Conway, and he's got some lap traffic. Is actually there's Latnik sliding off the track and hopefully he's able to get that thing to a stop i do not see him come across the track in front of wiglia reminiscent of what happened yesterday at spa uh, i don't know if you happen to catch the race yesterday uh rc but about three minutes into the race somebody slid it somebody was coming out of the pits and somebody slid right across coming out of eruge and smashed into the guy coming out of the pits so not what we want to see here today uh i think i was commentating that one uh, no, that would have been a spa, a spa yesterday. Yeah. Uh, I was commentating that one uh, with... Uh, okay, that was so a split. Uh, that was okay. a split. Uh, uh, yeah. Okay. Sorry, we have two split. different splits. <laughs> 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 RC joined us for the pro split yesterday. Uh, I was broadcasting the AM split, uh, but yeah, that happened in the AM split yesterday. It was, it was crazy. I mean, I think all, th all four of us in the box we just went, oh my god! <laughs> all at the same time on stream. It was, it was fantastic, but... I am glad to see Conway kind of closing the gap here with Wiggly at just a touch. So this is this is where we're going to start seeing the difference in the cars, right? We all know, like, the GT3 Porsche. Uh, 45 minutes into its stint, that thing starts falling off a little bit because it starts eating its tires. So I'm curious now if we're seeing either Wiggly, uh, you know, showing signs of, of, of just dipping his own pace or if it's something to do with the BMW, uh, you know, losing losing more grip over time or if perhaps Conway has just kicked it into another gear and found a little bit more pace and now that he's gotten comfortable picked up two tenths since the start finish line about halfway through this lap with 25 minutes to go that is plenty of time to catch up especially if he can start catching some slipstream and especially if Wiggly can catch up with his lap traffic and slow him down a bit it'll be an interesting interesting 25 minutes I think for Conway he's going to have to push hard yeah absolutely Conway, uh, as uh, sorry go ahead uh, Conway has been uh, finding very good pace. He has been doing better laps than Guglia in the last two or three. Um, very likely we could see a battle between them in the next 10 minutes or the last 10 minutes. Yeah, uh, absolutely. I, uh, I did want to just report that uh, Magoli, we saw him uh, kind of fly off the last corner there. Uh, he did pull into the pits with a full repair, and that's going to hit him uh, pulling back out onto the track in 17th place. So that's him losing a lot of ground uh, as he was uh, fighting for a podium position. Um, so that is going to be a pretty tough blow for him, but he is fully repaired out back on the track. Uh, try to find that ground. Uh, currently on your stream, we're, f we're following the Ryan Meenan and Romaneco battle that is still raging on. Romaneco has not found that uh, opening yet. Uh, Ryan Meenan playing very defensively and holding that pace down. The BMW seems to be holding onto that. Actually, there's going to be another tap right there. Uh, <laughs> uh, Ryan Meenan getting flashbacks to just a few moments ago. Uh, and we've seen Romaneco has the sportsmanship to know that, oh, that's not where I want to take you out at. Um, I want to take this out because I'm uh, trying to be faster than you. Uh, but that is interesting that the same thing happens. Uh, so uh, that's just showing how close this battle is as they fight back up into the mountain. Uh, and I'm I'm still on Romaneco has the pace uh, climbing the mountain. Uh, actually, he's going to be looking for another maneuver here. Uh, this is a super dangerous place to be trying to make any kind of maneuver. Uh, but I mean, it could be possible as he's actually getting caught up with a little bit of traffic ahead of them. Uh, so this might be the opportunity that he's looking for. Maybe get Ryan Mina in a position where he can't get past the back marker and uh, use that as an advantage. He's actually going to go back uh, for oh, uh, another toe. Oh, oh, it's oh, oh, so oh, close. Oh, oh. This is this is dangerous driving, but they they both want this position so hard, and he's not going to give this up. Actually, he's going to go completely oh. sideways, grab dirt, and oh, that was terrifying to watch. Keeps it steady enough to keep the battle going. Uh, they are not going to let a mistake like that end of this battle this is excellent racing that we are seeing at bathurst today i can't believe roman echo held on to that i i'd have been i'd have been dead i'd have been in the wall smashed after escape to pits i uh, he 
that was fantastic pulling by him. And we've seen him every time they come out of they come out of the cutting. That man wants to wants to dip pass in through Ryan Mean and coming across the mountain straight to Latnick, doing a it's a little bit dangerous trying to let people pass there on top of the mountain. I think he found about the only place they could. And luckily, you know, Ryan Meenan and Roman Echo, we're, we're doing it. But, you know, you were saying, Nick, uh, you know, Killian. So so we've got both the Ryan Meenan brothers. we got Killian and Cormac that race with us pretty often. Killian, uh, I have been told, is one of the best defenders that people have ever raced with. He might not have the pace that some people do. Roman Echo, I think, is definitely faster than him. But... You can't get by the guy. Uh, you know, it's just he is just going to defend every last inch, and you cannot get by him. And he is showing that. But he's still got 22 minutes left. As we're actually seeing these guys, uh, this is Woost and oh, a back marker here. Sorry, uh, this is Woost and a back marker. Alia here, kind of scrapping a little bit. Alia, um, I think he broke just a little bit too late and realized and kind of kicked himself sideways uh, in through the uh, in through the chase there. So good on him to make sure he's not taking out cars. Uh, hit the dirt a little bit and now he's back sliding back a couple spots there as Gil catching up to Woost here not too far back and of course that is for the final top 10 position as we now switch over to Ryan Gill, the other Gill catching up to Steven Woost here so we've got uh, Dustin Woost back in 10th Steven Woost his brother up in 6th place and this is Gill and Gill uh, not related in this case going to be catching both the Woos brothers on different ends of the track, and uh, Ryan Gill, though, has been making up that time, so Ryan Gill's last lap, uh, 2.15.0, again, not that great of a lap compared to what he has been doing, Steven Woos ran a 2.14.4, so, you know, last lap, Ryan lost a lot of time, uh, but, you know, if he can keep it consistent, he's got, he's got the chance to get there, he's only second and a half back, and if he can get some of that slipstream action coming down the streets. I think he can catch him. You know, again, 20 minutes left in this race. Anything can happen. It is Bathurst. And uh, we will see how these guys do as we're now looking at a lap car coming past the leader. This is uh, Quiglia that wants to come on past Mr. Bourne here and Ted Edwards there in the background a few seconds back fighting Bourne for position. Uh, there is Quiglia sliding past just barely there. He lost a little bit of time which should work in uh, Harry Conway's favor just a bit. But actually, we see Conway has dipped back in the past lap or two just a bit. He is down to 3.1 seconds, now 3.0. So he's gaining a little bit back, but has lost a little bit of time there just in the past couple laps. Uh, Conway ran a uh, uh, 5 tenths faster though that past lap just because Wigley got caught up by lap traffic. So lap traffic coming into play here, and this is what's potentially going to work into Conway's or Gwiglia's favor. We just don't know yet, as it just depends on where they catch him. Yeah, absolutely. And uh, 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 as we're kind of getting into the, the uh, lap traffic, uh, 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 as was mentioned, I mean, we're seeing the different strategies kind of play out. Uh, you know, seeing um, since, since passing is so tough on Bathurst, I mean, where you catch a back marker uh, could really affect your time. I mean, uh, in, in that last lap, uh, all of uh, pretty much everyone in the top 10 was almost down uh, a, a second or two off of their deltas uh, just because they were caught up in various moments of traffic and back markers and uh, try to fight off battles and stuff like that. Uh, so, I mean, uh, big shakeups like that. I think Conway is trying to fight and gain that ground. I mean, we have 18 minutes left of this race, and uh, he might try to catch the back of Guglia and uh, fight for P1, but, I mean... The, the back markers at Bathurst uh, can be uh, almost devastating to the time if you're trying to just fight for time and gain up that ground uh, that Guglia was uh, lucky to grab early on in the race and has held onto that. And uh, I mean, if he can ride that all the way to the checkered flag, that's going to be a huge win for him uh, as Conway is a, a huge competitor uh, around here at uh, RCI events. Uh, so this will be a really solid victory for him. Again, watching the Ryan Mina run back up battle here. Now coming down the elbow with 18 minutes to go. These guys, of course, we've been monitoring them for about the past, oh, 25 minutes or so. Still nose to tail here with Romero catching up a little bit there behind him. Now two seconds back, though. Roman Echo's got a little bit of the slipstream here. Ryan Meenan has no slipstream. He's going to be able to kind of dip onto the outside a little bit as they come down towards the chase. He's got the run. Can Killian Ryan Meenan outbreak him? That's going to be the question. Oh. A little bit of a touch there. Ryan Meenan's going to go off the track into the dirt. And Roman Echo is going to, uh, I, I can't decide. Yeah, it looks like he slowed down a little bit. Realize that, again, 
he touched Ryan Meenan probably at a little bit of a bad spot, and Meenan's gonna, uh, oh, nope, Meenan's gonna, I think, let him on pass, because I think that he maybe thought he did it, no, Romanenko thinks he did it, so they're just, they're going, no, you go, no, you go, no, you go, but now they're just back to fighting, I think that they're just like, all right, let's go, and here comes the Merc calling pass, Romanenko's gonna have the inside coming into hell corner, so will killing Ryan Meenan get the run off? Maybe not. Will the cutback happen? He's going to shoot for it, but I don't think it's going to happen. And there's Romanenko finally into that first podium position. Ryan Mina flashing the lights there, RC, but that is what he needed. And with that fight, Romero just got uh, within half a second. So with we're probably going to see a three. Like yeah, uh, we're going to probably going to see a three-way fight now. And yeah, that's... That's absolutely hilarious to see that they were trying to be so polite to each other that they, they, they let Romero kind of catch up to them. Uh, so they might turn this into a three-way battle, uh, a, a, a gentleman's duel, if you will, uh, uh, able to get past Brian Meenan. Um, and we'll see how that plays out. I mean, he does seem to have the pace to stay ahead of him. And it'd be interesting now that Brian Meenan is on the attack uh, and uh, not playing to his advantage uh, and see if... Uh, Romanek is going to sneak away now uh, as he's been trying to hold the pace in the mountain, but now that's might have just given the fire to Ryan Meenan uh, to fight for the position back, but I mean, just uh, little can be said to know uh, as we got 16 minutes left, plenty of laps to get this done, but I mean, if Romanek has been showing the pace that he's had in this battle, uh, he's going to fight his way uh, and get that distance uh, between him and Ryan Meenan. Uh, coming out onto the back straight here, uh, and that was a huge launch, and that's the distance that he's looking for, and I think this battle is going to calm down uh, just for the sake of the pace that Romanek has been able to hold in the mountain, and uh, we will see how that shakes out going forward. Yeah, I mean, that's the question right there, right? We have seen Romanek do very, very well uh, so, you know, coming up behind Ryan Meenan. We thought he had the pace, and now he's out of front. He might push for that. Uh, as we're seeing Pennington and Delinsky here kind of come past the back marker of Billy Octane and uh, see if they can get up uh, there fight for 14th position here. That is Pennington, or sorry, 15th position here. That is Pennington you're watching in front and Billy Octane in the back. I apologize, I was seeing Zelensky there, but yeah, this is a back marker. Uh, Billy Octane trying to unlap himself. Something I would like to point out that has happened uh, is two things. One, Killian Ryan Meenan is in the pit lane. Uh, now, I think he may have gotten some damage. We may have missed something. Killian Ryan Meenan in the pits. That's going to slide Ryan Gill, Steve Lewis, Chris Romero up a position. So not quite sure if Ryan Meenan got enough damage from that somehow down the line. But he is now pitting. Or perhaps if he didn't quite take enough fuel, he's decided to do that. But, of course, this means that Roman Echo and Romero and the two Mercedes can now have a little bit of a scrap. That is Ted Edwards there behind Romero down a lap in the 18th position. Roman Echo currently two seconds up above Romero. It's just a question of does Romero have the pace? And based on the previous lap times, I'm going to say no. But then we go back to it's Bathurst, and anything can happen. If Roman Echo smashes a wall somewhere, Romero can get very close very fast. Something else that happened while we were watching that battle David Gill and Dustin Woos back in ninth and tenth position, what is now ninth and tenth position. Uh, David Gill managed to slide past Dustin Woos, and Ryan Gill here has caught Stephen Woos. So the Woos brothers potentially losing a position of peace here. Uh, granted, Stephen and Ryan did just gain a position over Ryan Meenan there. Uh, I believe Ryan Meenan, I don't even see him on the board anymore, so he must be down quite a bit. Uh, looking uh, at my own game here, did he retire? He actually retired. had an, an, an update for that. Ryan Meenan uh, did actually throw the car off the track uh, pretty much straight on on the last corner uh, coming onto the main straight, uh, and then he immediately retired. So I'm not sure uh, if that was just a decision that he made. I mean, like, he just kind of went straight instead of turn. I don't know that, you know, that, that, that could be a, a, a number of things. It, it, it didn't look like something that he would do on oh. accident. Uh, so, yeah. I, I, I know we, we missed this or Jake had that replay there so that is Ryan Gill coming across the uh, dipper there and he did smash into the wall a bit so hopefully oh look at that there's an accident here if we can get a replay on that one Jake from Stephen Woos position there possibly we're going to see these guys come across the chase and there it is there's a little bit of a, a, a turnaround there from the 11 and 95 Ryan nowhere to go smashes in the 11 car there of Stephen Woos so that's the uh, that that is unfortunate for him of course Stephen Woos and Ryan probably both 
kind of damage from that. The question is, Stephen Wu's lost a few positions. Does Ryan Gill have enough damage that he needs to come in a pit for the next 12 minutes? That is a hard, hard hit onto that front end of that car. But 12 minutes to go, fifth place. Does he make the pit? That's the question. That was the 11, and uh, I, I believe it was the it was a McLaren, was it? So it was a 95, I think it was. A little bit of a back marker oh, yeah, scuffle there. Was it Zlatnik? I think so, back marker. Yeah, so there's a back marker there. Un unfortunate for the 11 car then of Steven Woos. He was having such a good race, you know, holding that top, uh, top now, what was top five position that Meenan's out. Uh, you know, he, he went ahead and smashed into that back marker coming into the chase. Not quite sure what happened there, but that's going to cost him positions. Works in Ryan Gill's favor, though. He is now up to fifth position. Of course, McDude did catch up to him, though. So he's now about a second behind Gill. So he's going to have some defending to do here shortly. As we're currently watching your race leader, Alexander Guiglia, 2.4 seconds ahead of Conway. Conway and him, of course, kind of sticking around this two and a half to three second mark here very uh, for about the past 30 minutes or so, give or take. I don't know if Conway has the pace. It's going to come down to mistakes at this point, I think, for Guiglia. 12 minutes to go. Uh, we'll see, I guess, is what we're at. Because anytime we predict something here at Bathurst, it never works. So I'm just going to go with we'll see. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. And uh, I mean, I did want to say that that lap, uh, they both found a lot of open air uh, getting around the back markers, actually. Uh, Conway trying to close that gap just a little bit as they're actually going to uh, share the main straight going into this next lap here with about uh, a little over 10 minutes to go. Uh, it's going to be a couple more laps for them to fight over. Uh, but I think five tenths that lap, by the way. Yeah, just huge, huge gains, and and that's actually something that I'm watching. Oh, here on. it is. Here's Ryan Gill. Ryan Gill and McDude actually going to pass. Ryan just sliding, uh, just no top speed. I wonder if he's got. You can see that hood is lifting. He's got no top speed left. I think that he is going to just keep falling down here. That is McDude sliding past him. He lost a couple seconds this this lap. Ryan deciding not to come into the pit lane again, even though he is that damaged. You can see the damage on that car from that incident last lap. Uh, I think he's going to try and hold hold the hold it down for the next 10 minutes or so about five laps to go for him but uh that is the pain the 218.3 that lap that is all of his pace gone yeah uh, uh, exactly but uh but uh, worth noting is that you know with only 10 minutes left i mean even if, even if he loses a few positions pulling into to fix damage now would put him way out of the top 10 so i think he's just hoping to hold on to what he can even though his pace is pretty shot now uh, taking that pretty heavy hit there, but I mean that's probably the best that he can do given the circumstances uh, You know, I I wouldn't be too surprised if he might have dropped down to ninth or 10th I would say uh, based on the pace But I mean if he's got a little bit of time he can try to fight people off He's like he's gonna slide a little bit more uh, You know the the internals of that car uh, must just be completely shot at this point So he's just kind of limping around the track trying to hold on to some time and could probably just try to play it defensively and get a position uh, that he would like out of this. Uh, but I mean, holding on to sixth or even seventh would be uh, pretty tough to do at this point with how much damage he's taken. Yeah, yeah. I mean, I was, he was four seconds off his normal pace last lap. And of course we did see him slide coming out of the cutting there again. And just everywhere he goes, he's losing traction. Yeah, there's all sorts of damage on that front end, and it is not going to be easy for that car to turn. He's holding off Collins pretty well across the mountain, but likely as soon as we get down out of the elbow here, we're going to see Collins use that big old Mercedes engine to get on past him. I would not be surprised to see the pass happen before the chase, but Collins actually did not have a great run coming out of the elbow there. It looks like he tapped the wall just ever so slightly. We've been seeing him do that. I think RC mentioned it about 40 minutes ago. We're still seeing him do it, but here it is right here. You can see how much damage Ryan's got, even with the better run coming out of the elbow he is just zip by him see ya buddy and ryan gill back down into seventh place steven woos 5.5 behind him of course that is the man who we saw ryan get tangled up with a few minutes ago when he got caught up with the back marker uh, of, of the mclaren i think of slatnik earlier a few laps ago so steven woos now trying to make up that time but how much damage does he have is the question can he catch ryan about five seconds left uh, or five seconds back from him. Steven Woos ran a 2.16.7 last lap. Ryan Gill running 2.18s now. Eight minutes to go. We'll see if he's able to to pull that out. He does, of course, not only have to catch him, also has to get past him. As we're seeing Zelensky slot in here. Looks like he just came out of the pits, uh, perhaps 
getting some damage taken care of and then got himself a stop and go penalty likely for speeding as these are all game penalties no stewards this evening so we uh, only have a game applied penalties drive throughs for track limits as well stop and go penalties for speeding in the pit lane so that's what Zelensky will see there and we've seen a uh, moose now pick up what is that about a second and a half just so far this lap and that's a back marker behind him so he shouldn't lose a position from that but it doesn't mean he's got quite as much damage as ryan does it still looks a little beat up there on the back end definitely so seven minutes to go guys um, collins has been quite lucky with the taps he's been doing on the wall uh, i counted the roughly eight or nine and we're talking about taps in the wall uh Wuss did exactly the same here at frogs um but uh, in regards to collins i've counted like eight or nine or something Along those lines, he's been super lucky in the way that he's been hitting the wall. Especially two times at Forrest's elbow, where I thought he would definitely destroy the front of the car, and apparently he wasn't that impacted. Yeah, I mean, definitely definitely some impact there, but as you said, not, not as much as we would kind of expect it to. Of course, I think Ryan took most of the beating there uh, for, for the accident that happened earlier, but yeah, Collins... I wouldn't be surprised, and we've just seen about, what did you say, about eight? I think we've seen eight on camera. I wouldn't be surprised if it's about double or triple that even <laughs> off camera uh, as, as he's been tapping the wall. But you now switch back over to Conway here. Again, about two and a half seconds back from Quigley, and this just seems to be where he's at. Again, I think Quigley is going to have to make a mistake. There's probably not going to be any back markers in the way. Again, about 20 seconds up the road from these guys, so unless something else happens, uh, probably not going to get any back marker interference here in the last oh three to four laps but uh again with bathurst you never know a little bit of a mistake from wiggly if or if he has to slow down enough because he wants to uh, you know be a little safe conway can catch him right away and even though it's hard to pass on this track you catch uh, you catch a good run places you can definitely slide on pass so still seeing five mercedes there in the top six that is conway romenko romero mcdude and uh collins there in the t uh, finishes out the top six BMW leading the pack. Here's Roman Echo again, of course, who is promoted to third position from the earlier incident with Ryan Meenan. And uh, gonna hold on to that podium position. Two seconds back from him is Romero. And there's Romenko, or Roman Echo rather, tapping the wall there, coming coming down uh, the top of the mountain. So we're just constantly seeing these guys tap these walls. And I think this has something to do with these GT4s just being a little bit more slighted than the GT3 cars in general. But so far, not too much, uh, too much drama overall. Definitely some drama, but not too much drama overall from all these little taps that have been going on. Yeah, I mean, it, it's it, it's something that we come to expect from Bathurst. I mean, at at this point, it kind of looks like some of the drivers are just kind of riding out those bumps just because you know that's kind of where they're comfortable. Why 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 push it when you got five minutes left of the race? Uh, you know, if you can take a couple more hits on the side, uh, what's it going to be at this point? Uh, you know, uh, Ryan Gale taking that heavy hit, um, and uh, looks like he hasn't lost too much more ground, uh, so he might be able to hold on to seventh place uh, in that 27 Chevy, uh, which at this point is pretty uh, respectable for what he's put that car through, or, or more of what Bathurst has, has put that car through, I, uh, I, I, I should say. Um, but, you know, I mean, with a couple laps to go here, uh, you know, he's going to be fighting off uh, Wuss, looks like, uh, back behind him. Uh, he's only got about two seconds on him uh, coming into the chase here, uh, and that could quickly change. Uh, you know, I mean, again, he's, he's fighting off the damage that he's got. Uh, looks like his back end's even looser uh, than it's been previously, uh, the Chevy being a, a, a little uh, lighter around these corners, uh, grabbing kind of two wheel in a little bit every time he hits a curb. Uh, so, I mean, it'll be interesting to see how that shakes out. Uh, back to the leaders uh, between Guglia and Conway, uh, still holding on to about the same split. They're still sitting about two and a half. Uh, they've, they've been trading lap times back and forth, and nothing seems to be uh, consistent either way. Uh, the last lap, Conway actually lost a little bit of time, but now Guglia's down two tenths, and Conway's up a little bit, uh, you know, so... It, I'm, I'm interested to see what Conway's going to do. Is he is he going to just hold on to second place, or is he going to go for P1? I mean, it might be something that he could try to push for, but, I mean, Bathurst is going to be very punishing if he, uh, you know, tries to push it and makes a little mistake, and that could cost him. 
Uh, but I mean, he's got a lot of space to play with uh, behind him. Uh, back to third position, uh, you know, he's got you know plenty of wiggle room. So if he wants to try to push it and try to see if he can grab P1, that's a possibility. But I mean, uh, Google has been so consistent trying to hold on to that time. Uh, it'd be interesting to see how they handle the final lap here. And we are just about on that final lap. They should be crossing the line here in about 10 seconds, which will mean this should potentially be the leader's final lap. It will be very, very close to see if they have one extra lap or not. And we currently see Stephen Woos has indeed caught Ryan Gill, uh, which is not, ex not unexpected. And there it is. Leader just crossed the line, so this will be the leader's final lap. And uh, I actually think that uh, we are seeing a little bit of that gap close. He, uh, Conway picked up about six tenths on the leader uh, last time, so we'll see if he's able to pick up a little bit more and potentially fight for that end. But Woost and Ryan Gill here are going to be the matchup that we are going to that we are going to see. Ryan is going to have to defend like hell this last lap and a half with that damage. We know Steven Woos has got about two seconds a lap on him, but here is Conway. Well, going there, uh, Woos did wipe out as well at, at Forrest's elbow. I'm not sure how the car is. I, I see that the... Oh, it goes white, and Gil is able to keep his position. I think Woos has damage in the car as well. Yeah, and there's Gil as well. Well, Woost is the one who Ryan ran into earlier. I would not be surprised to see that he has damage. So there is the other Gil now following up. So it's a question of not necessarily can Woost get past Ryan Gill, but can David Gill get past Ryan Gill? Because that's going to be where it is at as we are now. Back to watching the leader here fight one last back marker uh, as they are going to be coming closer and closer. Conway is catching now six tenths back. Back marker getting out of the way. This could potentially be the back marker that Conway needed. Seven tenths, eight tenths. He's catching up a little bit here. They're going to go through the dipper. If Wiglia can get a good run out of here into the elbow and down on the Conrad straight, he is pretty much going to lock this down. So here we're going to be coming down to the elbow for the very last time for today. And here is Conway. He's going to get the run. Looks like Conway gets gets a good exit, but Wiglia did as well. I do not think Conway is going to be able to make up that time. That is six tenths back, and this is probably going to be Guiglia coming across the start finish line. But we will see two more, or well, yeah, three more corners to go here at Bathurst. 60 minutes of Bathurst here with the GT4 pack here at RCI, and here's Guiglia breaking into the chase for the very last time, coming around. He's going to take the right hander. Conway still about five tenths back. He is not going to be able to catch this man, Alexander Guiglia. The Guiglia Motorsports number 18 BMW going to come through the final corner. And here he comes across the line. Guiglia going to win the first GT4 race here with RCI. Conway is going to place in second. And if we could dip back over to uh, here's Roman Echo going to come across the line here shortly. And we see Romero following up behind him about five seconds. McDoot in fifth. Collins in second. Uh, David Gill did slide past Ryan a little bit. If uh, I could get Jake to jump back to seventh position there for a second, I want to keep an eye on these guys. I'm curious to see what's going on with Woost. Looks like he's lost a little time actually as well. So I think Ryan, guys, is going to at least be able to hold on to that eighth position. Unfortunately, he did lose to David Gill, but I don't think Steven Woost is going to get that uh, get that last little bit there. So same thing from here. Ryan holding on to that top ten position. Good choice by him to stay out, even with all the damage. Excellent driving by him today. This is going to round out our top 10 pretty much because there's almost no other fights going on. It looks like Woost and Springer are a few tenths back in 10th and 11th position. So potentially something there as they come into the chase. But uh, Dustin Woost, uh, nope, this is in the last corner. So, yeah, he is good. Dustin Woost is going to come across in 10th. Springer for 11th. Rage is going to come across the line here shortly for 12th. Falling back through Bobby Pennington, Joe McCooley, who has fell back to 14th place after a good run at the start of the race, followed by Maholowind, uh, Darren Maholowind in 15th position. Round out top finishers here. So, as expected, a lot of dra so, some, some drama at Bathurst, but honestly, uh, tamer than some we've seen. <laughs> Guys, what do you think? I mean, that's totally possible. Uh, you know, it's always, uh, uh, I mean, an absolute blast to watch. I mean, uh, stressful to drive. Uh, I I feel for these uh, top level drivers uh, in the in the pro split. Uh, I mean Romero uh, in the AMP class actually uh, climbed his way up to uh, third position, uh, or fourth. I'm sorry, the the thing 
getting this updated for me. Uh, but I mean, like a, a solid performance. I mean, there was a lot of mix between the pro and am. Uh, and again, like it's it's a big thing of just kind of surviving Bathurst. Uh, you know, a lot of the passes we saw uh, were uh, you know cars retiring maybe or uh, pulling into the pits to fix damage. I mean, and that's a huge part of the strategy for Bathurst and why Bathurst is such an uh, exciting race to watch, uh, especially from the comms box here. Uh, you know, the the little mistakes that are made, the the you know nail biter uh, passes that ha that that are you're, you're forced to make. Um, you know, just makes it for really, uh, really exciting racing. Um, Conway actually uh, finished within 0.5 or uh, 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 0.6 of the leader, um, and he he really fought for that. You know, uh, uh, grabbed an early lead and held on to it, and you know, with a little more time, could have been different, but we'll never know. Uh, 60 minutes of Bathurst uh, makes for a very fun and scrappy race to watch. Yeah, and I think we learned a lot about the cars today. Uh, do you? Uh, I know you kind of jumped in last minute there, uh, random call sign. But you learned anything about the cars today here? Uh, a little bit now that we've seen a little bit of a longer race for these GT fours. The Mercedes and the BMW seem to have the more consistent pace, at least around Bathurst. They were. They kind of seems also the easier to drive all around. Yeah, I mean, besides the fact that we saw a lot of the Mercedes tap on the wall, uh, that does seem to be the case, right? I mean, because at Bathurst, it's all about consistency. It's all about keeping yourself uh, on on target for, you know, not missing the corners because that's the big thing here at Bathurst. And, oh, excuse me. Sorry about that. Uh, but, yeah, the Mercedes and BMW just having an excellent showing here. I think they finished uh, 8 out of 10 in the top 10. Of course, this is the uh, this is not the, the race settings that we're looking at at this point. The server has ticked over. But an excellent race from these guys, an excellent start to the GT4. Of course, guys, we have GT4 Championship starting up on Monday. Nick Setnik will be heading that championship up, and we have four action-packed splits that we will be bringing you guys. Pro Split will be streamed here on YouTube. We also have a Silver, an Am, and a Rookie Split that will be joined as drivers. So keep an eye on Discord. There are a couple slots still open, I believe, for the Rookie and uh, and Silver Splits, if I'm not mistaken. You guys can take, take a look at Discord. Sign up for that if you would like. And, of course, next week we have our uh, Sunday multi-class race. We'll be doing a Sunday GT3, GT4 race at Silverstone. So keep an eye out for that. Still slots open for that as well, guys. That'll be our first multi-class race. And then Thursday multi-class championship starting the week after. Lots of GT3 coming your guys' way. And that's not even to mention the Friday championship, our six hours of Barcelona race qualifying next week and then six hours of barcelona on august 1st lots of action packed races coming your guys way join us up on discord feel free to sign up for any of those races ask questions that you need to all the information should be here on discord and in the meantime we hope you guys have a fantastic rest of your day and it's been a pleasure to bring you this gt4 race here at bathurst when you feel it's hopeless when you think that you lost Oh, I will take your hand and we'll rise up from the dust Oh, here we go, 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 let us heal and grow You won't be alone, we're unstoppable Don't be afraid to show what we're going for This is what we know Here we come back to life, we're still breathing Standing up, everybody's gonna see it Oh, all you need to know is that we're holding on we will rise up